Hi everybody, it's Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in Premiere Elements 2023, part two of our eight-part basic training tutorial series. In part one, we covered the Quick View workspace. I'm going to spend most of this course talking about the Expert View workspace. And as I said before, don't be intimidated by the word expert. You don't have to be an expert. It just is a more powerful editing space. It's much more like a professional editor. In fact, you can see that you have more tracks of video and audio, and we can toggle these open if we'd like, as we add clips to them, or keep them compressed to save vertical space. We can add as many as 100 tracks of audio and 100 tracks of video. We have many more options. If you remember, we had a small selection of transitions in the basic workspace or the quick view workspace. In the expert view workspace, we have many, many transitions, including audio transitions that we can use. Many, many more tools and effects than we have available in the quick view workspace. Also, you remember when we added media to our project that the media came immediately to our timeline in quick view. In expert view, as we add media, we will be adding it to the project assets area and then dragging the clips down to our timeline as needed. But starting a project in Premiere Elements is fairly simple. You can either let the program set the project up for you based on the first clip you add to the timeline, or you can manually select the settings for your project. Let's start a new project. Just go up here to File, select New Project. We don't worry about saving this one right now. And this is the new project screen. And from here we can select specs for our projects, including resolution. And so this is the standard sort of landscape view that most video uses, 16 by nine, or there's some old four by three. People really don't shoot in four by three very much anymore. But if you prefer and you shoot your video with your phone held upright, there are options here for setting your video project up for upright video or square if you're creating a video for say Instagram or social media. And here you can just select what media site you're going to upload your video to and it will automatically set up your video to those specs. There are also more advanced settings here too if you wanna select specific settings for your video project. But let's select square intentionally here with 1080 by 1080 at 29.97 frames per second. And I'm going to intentionally not select force project settings to this project. If you select force setting, then you don't have to worry. The program is not going to change its settings to match your video and it will save you an extra click or two later on. I'm going to leave it unchecked just to demonstrate something. Most of the time I'm going to select that if I've specified my video specs. The reason why the program will offer to change its project settings to match your video specs is because when your project settings and your video are aligned, when they have the same settings, like 1920 by 1080, you're going to get the best performance out of the program. However, there are situations like if you're creating a video for Instagram where you want to force the project to be a certain shape, even if your video is not that resolution show you what I mean. Let's go to project assets. We can add media, by the way, by going to the add media button. There are a lot of different ways to add media directly from a camcorder or browsing to files and folders. There's also a shortcut. If your media is already on your hard drive, you just go here to the project assets panel, double click on an empty space and it will open up your browse screen and we can grab some video here. So let's just grab a series of clips. Notice that unlike in quick view, the video doesn't immediately appear on your timeline. It goes into this project assets area. And there is a lot of preparation you can do in project assets. But we're not going to go into that right now. I just want to grab a video clip here from project assets and drag it down to my timeline. And notice that because it's the very first clip I've added to the timeline, I get this mismatch warning. Hey, your project settings are different than your video specs. Do I want to change the project settings? In which case the program will automatically set the project settings up to match your clip and give you a nice efficient performance. Or in this case, we want to create square video for Instagram. So we say, nope, keep the existing settings and add the clip to the timeline. So now our video is a different shape than the project settings, right? So our video is larger than the project settings. And this will happen, say for instance, if you've shot upright video and you put it into a widescreen project. The program has a very nice feature for sizing your video. Say this video was too small, for instance. 
has a very nice feature here for sizing your video up so that it fits the video frame. If I just select my video clip here on the timeline and I go up here to automatic reframe, that's the button in the upper left of the timeline, and click on that, watch what happens. The program will automatically size the video up so that it fits the video frame. Now, in some cases, you may even have a face in your video. If you select that video clip, let's close project assets here and click on auto reframe. The program will not only size the video up so that it fits in the frame, but watch what it does It's smart enough to find the face in the video and center it in your video frame. So pretty cool, depending on whether you want the project to automatically match the specs of your video or whether you want to specify what size project you want to create. Either way, the program is designed to work with you and meet your needs.